Debbie Reynolds has come of age. On April 1st she rounded that wonderful comer called 21, the big day in everybody's life. But does that mean that she is going to change her ways of living? Debbie doesn't think so. So I'm 21, she says, so what? Am I supposed to kick over the traces and ran wild? That's crazy. Besides, what's so magic about the number 21? That's a good question. A better one was the one the bank asked. They called to find out what she wanted, done with the money, earned in pictures, before she came of age, that would be transferred to her account on her 21st birthday. Hang on to that though, said Deb, put a guard around it. Even if it isn't the Rockefeller Foundation, there's a very special project I wanted to go into. Project it is. Debbie's decided to build, perhaps buy, an apartment house, with the money. No April Fool is Deb. An apartment house is right, says Debbie, and with plenty of closets, but plenty. Probably want to call it Closet Inn. In fact, I'm going to ask the architect to design the closets first, acres of them, and then hang the apartments around them. Debbie wants the apartment house to be a gift to her parents. Her dad, she says, will have a ball taking care of it. Debbie remembers the idea first came to her when she was winging her way homeward from entertaining the troops in Korea this past January. There I was in that army plane, Debbie says, surrounded by all the gifts I'd bought in Japan. My pockets were stuffed full of silk things, and I held my most precious buy, a hundred-year-old cuckoo clock for my mom, in my lap. There were three sets of china that I had too, but there was no room around me, so the pilots were kind enough to store them with their gear. They knew their business, but you can't see air pockets, and they seemed to run into all of them. Every time we'd hit one, the plane would drop like an anchor. My poor little cuckoo couldn't take it. His mainspring must have been sprung or something. Each time we hit an air pocket he'd pop out, cuckoo, stick out his tongue at me, and then scurry back inside the clock. According to Debbie there was hardly enough room for the people in that plane. Because she was surrounded by all her purchases, she couldn't help thinking of some of the other things she'd wanted, when she first started out in pictures. I'd always dreamt of three things, Debbie admits. A swimming pool, a pearl watch, and a trip to Paris. I saved the trip to Paris for the last. I promised it to myself on my 21st birthday. Debbie has the swimming pool, and she has the watch. She calls the pool her Abadaba pool, because she earned it from the royalties on her recording of Abadaba Honeymoon. The pearl watch her parents gave her, much to her delight and surprise. As for the Paris trip, Debbie had planned it to be the maddest ever. A trip to end all trips. First class, real gone and with breakfast in bed. But it was in that plane, that the idea for the apartment house hit me, explains Debbie. Seriously, we're all looking for happiness, and I remember thinking on that plane, there was a time, when I thought happiness could be found in things, like the pearl watch in the swimming pool. Then I wasn't so sure. Debbie remembered the happiness, that her parents enjoyed in giving the watch. She also thought about the fun she got from watching the gang on the block swimming in her new pool. I remembered thinking on the plane, she says, that the happiness I'd so far experienced was in people, and not in things. Besides, the seriousness of the Korean situation weighed heavily upon Debbie. She had been touched by what she had seen, yet she determined not to discuss it in print for fear the boys would think she was capitalizing on her visit. Debbie's young heart was full of the love of giving, and she intended to put it into practice, when and where she could. It was this inspiration, that made Debbie decide to give the apartment house to her parents after her 21st birthday instead of taking the mad Paris trip. I can always go to Paris, laughs Debbie. Maybe in a year or two. I do believe, the Paris will be there for a long time to come. Just now Debbie is interested, in planning the apartment house. She says she'll surely have one of the singles for her very own. I hate to be alone, but I need some place to keep my clothes, and to spread out. However, since my parents will live in another apartment, I'll still be close to home, and it won't be living alone at all. I love my parents, and just because I'm 21 doesn't seem to be reason enough, to fly off somewhere else. Some people feel, though, that there's an age when every young boy or girl should break away from home in order to develop independence. Debbie agrees. But, says Deb, it's an individual problem. Some leave earlier than others. Look at me for example. I've been on my own since I was 16, so I've been away from home many times and then back again. I think my case is different since most kids don't travel as much as I do. If you're married, however, Debbie thinks living away from your family is best. But again, it's an individual problem. Course, I'm not married, says Debbie, but. Married being the magic word it is, Debbie's pretty blue eyes sparkle and light up like New Year's Eve. But, that doesn't mean I don't have a man in mind. A sort of ideal man, that is. He's got, but got to have a sense of humor for sure. 
for his own protection, cause I'll probably be teasing him round the clock. Then he should like sports, because I like sports. And I feel, that the more things we have in common the better. As for his job, I don't care, if he's in the picture industry or not. Just doesn't make any diff. He could sell donuts as far as that goes. Lastly, he's got to love children, and I do mean love, because I want four. There was a time in Debbie's life, when romance added up to one R.J. Wagner. According to Debbie this is no longer so. Well, I guess you can say we still see each other, but we don't date anymore. However, I think R.J. is a terrific guy. He has a new apartment in the same building with Dan Daly, that he decorated all by himself. I understand it looks fine too. I think it's great, that he can manage so well. Lots of the younger kids, have trouble handling their finances, and when they get off by themselves too much is expected of them. They go overboard financially. Not RJ. He's got a good head on his shoulders. I think he got it from his dad. I know that, if there is any of the bank's loot left, after we build the apartment house, I'm going to ask Mr. Wagner, to help me invest it in some good old-fashioned solid Jackson stocks. Besides the financial advantage of sharing the new apartment house with her parents, Debbie feels that her family is good for her. They help keep her feet on the ground. In fact, they're always on my back, is Debbie's lament. Recently I had a still picture of me, that I thought was terrific. It was one of the first stills, that I've really liked. It actually made me look beautiful, all eyes and everything. So I took it home on my birthday, and showed it to everyone there. And what do you think? Nice picture, huh? I said. Well, yes, it's nice, very pretty, but it doesn't look like you, they say. Oh, no, says I well, who, just exactly who, does it look like? Zero T looks more like me than like anybody else I can think of. Oh, sure, sure, they say, and then comes the punchline, but it's just too pretty, Debbie, to be you. It just must be somebody else. So you see they keep me steady on my feet all right. I'll probably have to be a hundred years old before they'll say anything flattering. Even being 21 doesn't make any difference. At least not around our house. There's more than just a steadying influence in Debbie's relations with her parents. The emotional bonds, that tie Debbie to her family are strong. Christmas and New Year's, for example, have always been two of the nicest days in the year to Deb. But when she made the Korean trip she had to give up this festive holiday time at home. Debbie remembers when she returned with her four boxes full of presents, that she was surprised to find the Christmas tree still standing, lights burning like fireflies, and her presents from her family, and friends still unwrapped and waiting patiently for her under the tree. It's lucky the tinsel glistened the way it did, because it kept the tearful gleam of happiness on Debbie's eyes and cheeks from being quite so obvious. No, Debbie's found, you don't have to be 21 to be sentimental. 21 or 91 she hopes it never changes. But it's known, that Debbie and laughter walk hand in hand. She can't stand, being damp eyed for long, so she broke, opened her four trunks from cafe, and began handing out the gifts. Ivory and cameo for mother, beaded purse for sister-in-law, Joyce, Baby niece, Gail, got a fur-lined vest, but decided not to wear it. For no good reason at all, says Debbie. Imagine, a perfectly good fur-lined, fur-lined, mind you, vest. But she turned up her cute little nose at it. Debbie shrugs. Then it was Debbie's turn to open gifts. First, the present from her agents, a pair of pearl bracelets, that joined to make a charming choker. It's real elegant, boasts Deb. I think pearls are in such good taste, because they're dressy without being loud or obvious. Not that I'd throw away diamonds. I mean, not completely. In addition, one of Debbie's neighbors made her a pair of lounging pajamas and her parents, after much hinting, gave her a bowling ball with a plaid carrying bag. Mad, absolutely mad, says Deb. Those PJs are simply crazy. And the plaid bag, well, really, it's just the last word. I go onto the lanes, and you think I was driving a solid gold Cadillac. Let me tell you we had a ball. Our own special December 25th smack in the middle of January. The warm secure feeling that Debbie gets from this wonderful family of hers that is always giving us the thing she never wants to change. She will never let her being 21 pull her away from it. In fact, she says, I couldn't think of celebrating my 21st birthday without the family. We had our own special party again. A lot of laughs, the wonderful enchiladas mom makes, and gag gifts. The thrill was the family's serious gift, a lovely pearl ring. Just what I really wanted. It was the nicest birthday I've ever had, not because I was 21, but because we were all together again. Debbie said her mother was the only one who gave them any trouble. Though her brother Bill came all the way from Korea, and dad stayed home from work, mother had to push to find time in her busy schedule. Monday, it seems, is her day at the Girl Scouts, 
Tuesday she goes to sewing class. Thursday it's the Red Cross. Friday it's another patriotic project. Lucky the first was on a Wednesday, laughed Ev, or we wouldn't have had any enchiladas. Since Debbie has returned from Korea, she has spent most of her free time at the studio trying to catch up on both her work and the pictures she missed. She finished I Love Melvin and give a girl a break before leaving. That's something else that will never change, she says. I could be 21 or 71 and I'd still see every movie I could. I saw two Technicolor pics in one afternoon, and when I came out into the dusk, everything was three shades of red and green. I was colorblind. In addition to the pictures, Debbie works overtime trying to keep up with the runaway train of a job that's hers. When I started in this business, says Debbie, I was strictly a no-talent kid, this is Debbie's opinion, so I had to hustle. I studied and studied hard. Dancing, singing, acting, and I've never quit studying. But I've got a goal in mind, and I'm going to keep working toward it until I get it, or it gets me. This being 21 isn't going to change that either. Debbie, who can sing, dance, and act, longs to be a comedian. A real slapstick comedian, complete with pie in the face and pratfalls. Strictly no dignity stuff. But every time I latch onto a role that I think will lend itself to these indignities, I get the same answer. You can do that. You're a girl. T should hope to tell you, and it's real observing of them to see this. But what they don't seem to realize is that a girl is better equipped for this sort of thing, if you know what I mean. Come to think of it, and along this line, maybe, maybe there's one little change that could be made now that I'm of age. Like giving up my chocolate malts with strawberry ice cream. A gal could gain an inch or two if she doesn't watch out. But otherwise, I'm strictly a no-change gal. Those who know her best know Debbie means it when she says something. So don't expect 21 to reveal a new Debbie Reynolds. Gosh, laughs Debbie, I hardly know the old Debbie Reynolds yet myself. Give me another few years, say 21 more, to change my ways of living. That ought to do it. It might do it at that. But change can't improve the Debbie who's 21. And a happy birthday to you. Photoplay Magazine May 1953